Pride Month is coming up in a few days, and retailers are already rolling out some of their LGBTQ plus themed merchandise, including Target. But the companies had to pull some of the clothes and accessories off the shelves and website. The company explained in a statement, quote, since introducing this year's collection, we've experienced threats impacting our team members' sense of safety and well-being while at work. Now, the company said the items being removed are the ones at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior, but didn't specify which ones. However, the items getting the most backlash include these tuck-friendly bathing suits that are meant to be inclusive for transgender people. I want to make it clear they don't say tuck friendly bathing suits on the website or on the brand. Also designs from a London based designer who also sells outside of Target a cult or satanic themed items. What do we think of Target's move here? What are companies supposed to do to avoid the backlash and boycotts that have happened to brands like we all know, Bud Light? We are just getting in Erica news. Bud Light has lost in value as of today from Dylan Mulvaney, $15.7 billion in value. What does one do? That's a significant monetary fallout. Yeah, I don't know if we can contribute all of that. To I was gonna say, not all right. Dylan Mulvaney. Right. Um, controversy but congratulations target you just played yourself um, on the eve of pride month literally um, this is what we call performative allyship and this is the reason why everyone is so up in arms about people monetizing um, saying that they are allies because allyship is not meant to be comfortable why is it not meant to be comfortable because the people that you are aligning with aren't comfortable mm -hmm. the whole point of allyship is to join forces mm -hmm. is to amplify minority voices. That means that you are in it with that group regardless. So if you are gonna back down from what you were doing, essentially just monetizing off of LGBTQIA+, right. then that means that you were never about it to begin with. So any company that wants to stand down and say that they don't want the backlash and they wanna play both sides of the fence, which is impossible you try to get everybody you're gonna get no one so I want to see what happens with this target situation I also want to encourage any company out there that's really about it to stand strong about anyone that they are aligning with because that's the only way that we know that you aren't performing that was so well said and so important that isn't being brought up in the conversation. Uh, Al, I want to get your take here. But some people are saying, I boycott every company that dares to target kids with LGBTQ propaganda. Or someone said on, on Twitter, the target battle will be won by strong men, oh, excuse me, strong moms standing up for their kids. Target hired a Satanist to groom your kids into a sex cult. Okay, that's fine. If you feel like that, don't go to Target. You vote with your wallet. The, the the, and what yeah. if you lose $15.7 billion uh, like, in value? Yes, they'll come back because you know whose stock dip, dipped right after Colin Kaepernick was Nike. And last I checked, they still have a business. What you have to understand, and Erica, I completely agree with what you're saying about allyship, but I think about that more in the individual. Like I, I got, but I don't expect that from my businesses. What I expect from the corporations that I deal with is cold, calculated finances. And they looked and they were like, hey, there's a market here we are not serving. And they uh, catered to pride. But I don't think that Target had, Target, there's not a guy named John Target. This is a business. This is a data processing machine that figures out what people buy and how we sell it to them. So the idea that Target is, is changing their policies, we, we've lost our mind. What we need to be doing is saying, who's calling in the death threats? That's what yeah, we need to be doing. Yeah, we I don't agree, say, Target, how are you going to deal with this backlash right. of these death threats? Have we lost our collective mind here? Yep. We're like, yeah, hey, there's a woman that thinks we're Satanists. We might need to pull this line down. What, Jeff? Talk to me, because I'm, I'm, please. No, I, I'm with I, I feel like we're at Bizarro Land where we're like, you're, we're getting death threats. We're doing something wrong. I, I always thought it was the person doing that. That's a right. very yeah, well said. You're speaking, said. I think both of you spoke for me, but I want to hit this next. Yeah, segment. and this yeah. is directly to what Jeff has really spoken a lot about on the show, speaking of the new anti-woke movement. For years now, people have complained about cancel culture and the way people or groups can get canceled over offensive behavior or past statements that are deemed inappropriate in today's society. But here is a question for you. Is this anti-woke movement that Al was just referring to targeting companies the new cancel culture? Jeffrey. Yes. So in this particular instance, I look at Newton's third law, and it says with every action in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Mm. That's what's happening. Life is balancing out. And let me explain a little bit to, to both of your points. 
when a company panders to mi the minority group of people that are complaining, yeah. this is what happens. When networks fire people for something they did 20 years ago, this is what happens. I'm not talking about cancel culture. My whole thing that I spoke about for years about cancel culture was this. Not getting rid of the Bill Cosby's or the Harvey Weinstein's or the people that sexually abuse someone. Those people have to go. That was a reckoning. I'm glad right? things like that happened. I'm glad the women's movement happened. I'm glad BLM happened. Those are things that this we needed to balance life out. The extremism and networks starting to cancel people and just doing things to pander to this minority group. 10% of the people make up 90% of the content on social media. People don't, they don't put those numbers together. The majority of us aren't talking. They're not saying anything. The majority of us are shopping at Target. If nobody brought up this ad, we'd still shop at Target. It's pandering to the people and polling it and giving up your stance of power, saying, I'm gonna listen to nobody. And I'm gonna take poll this, shame on Target for polling it. Shame on networks for firing people. Shame on everybody for doing things that the 10% of the people are yelling about. Okay. They're the loudest. I agree with you, but let's I f fully, fully agree with you. I'm going to take the other side here. I'm Bud Light. I agree with you. I want to ignore it. I want to not care what the 10% say, but I also don't want to lose close to $16 billion. Well, uh, respond, I'll, respond I'll, I'll answer that. quickly. Okay. Bud Light screwed up with that ad, okay? They mistargeted it. They already had an audience. There was no need for it. Had they did that, and I don't know if this would have happened, if they did that with Bud Light, there would be no issue. Or, I'm sorry, if they did that with the Bud Light seltzer, there would be no issue. I think I think this was the mountaintop. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't think it's a big deal. We've talked about it so many times. Right. It's not a big deal. I think people just got fed up with like the pushback, mm -hmm. and this was the mountaintop but for it, Bud Light. It, it, Dylan Mulvaney did the same ad essentially with Nike. We don't see that pushback with Nike. Right. We don't see the monetary fallout with Nike. Right. I just think Bud Light was an extreme example this, this of is, what happened. This is where I will push back, and Erica, I want to get your opinion on what I'm about to say. I don't think Bud Light mis, uh, mistargeted that ad. That ad was a targeted, ad, a very specifically sniper-targeted ad for a very, very specific audience. The audience that it wasn't intended for took it and ran with it. No different than if there's a YouTuber that we've never heard of, but they walk in the room and our kids start shaking in their boots because they're like, oh, that's so-and-so from the game. The thing is, these, at the reason Bud Light, to your point, mm. was going to get Dylan Mulvaney is because they were losing money like this. Brands have to rebrand, otherwise they will go away. So Bud Light was trying to get ahead of this trend by getting new voices. And the old voices saw that new voice and said, we don't like it, we want the old way. And Bud Light's like, the old way is having us lose all this money. D that's a wonderful point. I, you're probably right. I probably kind of misspoke on that. No, but let me. are having a thought. We're having a good yeah, conversation. Yeah, we're definitely I having a conversation. It. Here's where I think Bud Light misstepped. The marketing director, when she spoke out and mm -hmm. said, hey, this isn't targeted to frat boys. This is what we that do. Was, that, that was, was a, a misstep. Move. We said that and on the we were yeah. talking about cancel culture. That's She's right. in a leave. She should have been fired mm -hmm. because people have been fired for way less. I don't work for CBS anymore because of something I said 14 years ago in a one minute clip mm. because seven people complained. But CBS had to flex his muscle and get rid of some kid that was on Big Brother. Good way to go. Major network right. to kick people out the door. Good for you. She misspoke. She should be fired. Not a step down. She should be made an example of, just like everybody else. In and the that's the thing, culture, really quickly, with power, world. Jeff. When you give people power, they can stomp out the Harvey Weinstein's. But once they're all gone, you still got that hammer in your hand. Mm -hmm. And now you just got a bunch of people enlisted. And sometimes, unfortunately, the Aziz and Zars and the Jeff Schroders are catching some of that uh, collateral damage. Love this convo. Love it.